Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Walk the Talk. And why is it special? Because it marks a fresh beginning of an entirely new season of a show which has run on now uninterruptedly for almost 12 years. And the reason it keeps running with such popularity and such support from the audience is because we have wonderful guests. Dr. Madhrinath, I can't tell you how blessed I am to be starting this new series. Thank you very much, Mr. Gupta, for coming to our institute. With a man hailed by NDTV among India's 25 greatest living citizens. And also... It's a great honor. And it needs a great honor that you have come today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that too at Shankar Netrale, hailed by many people as probably the finest charity research hospital in India. One of the finest in the world, in fact. We are trying our best. In the area of eye care. Yes, sir. They are good teamwork. I'm very blessed with a group of people who work very hard. Everyone from A to Z. We have one very important philosophy. Work shall be our worship. That is the philosophy. Everybody seems to have taken it up very well and we seem to observe it. And so that is the reason why people seem to like the services we are here. Sir, uh, if I notice this, everything is built by charity here. Yes. And I see that every philanthropist and every industrialist of India is here from Tata to HTFC to Bajaj, to Aditya Birla Group, uh, to Mahiko, uh, I think you stand in the Mahiko block somewhere. Yes, Mr. B.R. Barwale. Yes. Dr. B.R. Barwale of Mahiko. Yes, and I, I, I see Malika Srinivasan has made an endowment. Yes. So, they all, uh, Nani Palki Bala, your great patron. Very special, sir. So, all of them trust you with your money. Yes, sir. And I know some of them, they are very hard-nosed people, they don't part with money easily. <laughs> Sir, I think I am very fortunate. We do good work. I think the good work is spread to the people. And this is our earned a good name. From all these industrialists whom we mentioned, it is a name which we have earned by working hard, which has resulted in their coming forward, supporting us very generously. And one little fact that people don't know is that this is also the largest nursery of eye specialists in India. A very large number of Indian eye doctors over two generations have been trained by you. Yes. For 540 people have been trained so far. There are different kinds of training programs. Not only healthcare is very important to us, but teaching and training and research are the three important objectives of the institution. In fact, uh, many organizations have listed this amongst the final medical institutions in the country. And one of the good ones, uh, uh, not the finest. One of the, one of the good, good ones. In fact, India today listed you among the ten finest institutions in the country, educational institutions in the country. Yes, sir. And I think the statistics are quite staggering. I think one-sixth of all cataract surgeries in India are done either here or by your students. Yes, indeed. We also have education programs in optometry and laboratory technology. And here is my wife who is in charge of the laboratory there. Yes, I am. And I know that you met together in America when you were studying to be doctors. So, the hospital requires teamwork. And we need to have capable, specially specialized people, professional people. So in that way, we have taken various branches in teaching and training. The body technology is one of them. And in lab, we have made a progress, we have made a breakthrough. For example, in the research lab, you will see that we are the first one to introduce rapid diagnostics and eye infection. I see. It helps us in diagnosing what is the infection due to, so that you could provide them the current therapy, the correct therapy right. for them. So this is uh, this is uh, as modern as anything in the world now. I would say so. Yes. For equipment, training, everything. And I believe uh, a very large number of peer-reviewed research papers. This is a research institution. This is not just a charity hospital. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have also, talking about education, programs leading to PhD. Right. A lot of research is done. A lot of publications are there. I'm very proud to say that uh, one-third of the research publications from India are from Shankar Australia in the field of ophthalmology. So, one-third peer-reviewed research publications in the field of ophthalmology are from Shankar Netrale. From India, that's which is a, Which is fully a charity. Yes. In fact, we are now going through the children's uh, wing, which you've just built here. So, sir, uh, 
आई ऑल्सो बिलीव दैट यू हैव कंबाइंड चैरिटी एंड बिजनेस वेरी वेल सो दोज यू कैन अफोर्ड टू पे पे बट वी हैव ओनली वन स्टैंडर्ड टैरिफ फॉर द पेइंग क्लास राइट वी डोंट रियली टैरिफ फ्रॉम लेट से दोज हू कम फ्रॉम रिच फैमिलीज रिच प्लेसेस राइट बॉम्बे दिल्ली एंड कलकत्ता सेम टैरिफ इवन अ फॉरेनर is what the tariff is for the indians here so so there is so there is no vip card and our tariff is affordable by a middle class in india so no vip card and no vip treatment vip treatment in the sense that if somebody like a minister can be seen we provide him right earlier appointment with right. the in on priority right so uh, whether it's not paying poor people or it's Paying VIPs, everybody gets the same treatment. Yes, sir. The quality of the treatment is the same, right. and I can vouch say for that because we do maintain medical records, right? And these records analysis shows that the the outcome for the paying patients and non-paying patients is the same. Right. But sir, how do you get around this problem that we now have in other private hospitals, many of whom, many of which are packaged as charities? Uh, they are called charities or research institutions but no research happens no charity happens and doctors actually get paid on the basis of their turnover and profitability so in fact the joke is it's a cruel joke that you know a good doctor is one who receives the patient vertically but sends him back horizontally no so no comment i think uh, india has got good great medical team i think uh, i was just i many a time I would consider India as a mecca for medicine. We have exceptionally good, skilled doctors, very knowledgeable doctors. They provide the exceptionally good care at a price which is about one tenth what it is in America or in England. I would say that we have both kinds: those who look after charities only, those like us who look after charity and pain patients, those who look after only the pain patients. So, how do you find the balance that people don't get greedy? the doctors do get greedy doctors are human beings so in our institution we have made that there is no private practice and all the doctors work for a salary and this is the fact which is appreciated most by mr nani palkewala i would like to bring to your attention that he bequeathed his entire property hearing that all the doctors work here for so his entire property nani palkewala bequeathed to you yes i see only for this reason that we are not in private practice trying to make money because he may have seen the bombay example where in bombay hospitals uh, i mean i'm not bombay hospital only but bombay hospitals almost everybody does lucrative private practice so this is an example for group practice where all the doctors join together and under one roof we have every specialty of ophthalmology if somebody has got a corneal problem we have corneal specialists here right if a retina problem we have retina specialists too so he doesn't have to go outside the campus right so you can have the treatment right here right from one room to another room you walk you have electronic medical records so even the short should have to walk i think you were among the first institutions in the country to have electronic records i see geloji namaskar ji namaskar ji cabinet minister sitting here no less thavar sir geloji ji minister ji. for social justice and empowerment ji aap to aaj bilkul janta mein baithe hue hain yahan pe ji kaise aaye maine shankar netralay ka naam 20-25 वर्षों से सुना था बहुत तारीफ सुनी थी फिर जब मैं मिनिस्टर बना तो मुझे जानकारी मिली कि हमारा यहाँ विकलांगता संस्थान है वो विकलांग लोगों के हित के काम करती है और उनका पुनर्स्थापन करने की कोशिश करते हैं और उसमें इस शंकर नेत्रालय का भी बड़ा योगदान है तो इच्छा थी जिज्ञासा थी कि शंकर नेत्रालय को देखूँ मैं यहाँ आया मैंने वास्तव में देखा कि यहाँ ईश्वरीय कार्य हो रहे तो सर दिस पार्टली आंसर द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ ग्रीड अमंग डॉक्टर्स बट वॉट हाउ मच ऑफ एन इंसेंटिव इज रिसर्च रिसर्च एंड ऑल्सो द फैक्ट दैट पीपल हु वर्क हेयर देर सी वी हैज वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट द डिवर ट्रेन इन शंकर नेत्रालय ट्रेन इन शंकर नेत्रालय the acceptance by the outsiders outside world is good you all get good jobs particularly in the united states if somebody wants to pursue further studies they're given a royal treatment right they get an admission to that much fast 
optometry in particular, I would say, is done very well. And we have collaboration with the University of Berkeley, University of California, Berkeley, Berkeley. California. We also have collaboration with Missouri University, Missouri. And we have now in the process of developing collaboration with uh, the optometry school in Alabama. And I believe you have a waiting list of uh, trainee doctors from overseas who want to come and work in Sankar Netrale. We don't encourage people from outside India, sir. Lots of problems are there because right. they have, have a license to practice. Without a license, you would not allow anybody to touch a patient, number one. Number two, sir, we have a need for training our own people. So we, we don't do this for uh, capitation fee. If an outsider comes, he's prepared to pay a lot of money for training. Yeah. Oh, just to get trained here? Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, so, sir, what have you done? Uh, I know, the, you know, a lot of people run charity hospitals and I know people do work with compassion. So, you have all those qualities. But what have you done to build in this concept of scholarship and training and teaching and research? Because that really is your big strength. Because this, is, this isn't this is just any eye hospital. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Ali. Thank you. And you are not just any eye doctors, if I may say so. <laughs> So how, how have you done that? Essentially, sir, if the objectives are clear, and if it's to count the objective, and do your work and leave it to him for the results. Him as in I, God. I think it works out well. So, I've been very fortunate, I must say. And my wife has been extremely nice in cooperating with me at most. So she also doesn't look after the monetary returns, whatever we do. Right. Thank you. So, sir, uh, you are a very devout person. Yes, sir. You are a very devout person. Sir, I would say that uh, I do have reverence for uh, the Kanchi Kamakoti Gita Sampati. The Shankaracharya. Yes, sir. And he is the one who gave me the idea that we must start an institution of missionary spirit. And that is how we started it. And so I feel that. It is his blessing, in a very benign way, runs his organization, is responsible for the success of his organization. And uh, I believe until he asked you to advise you to move to charity, you had a very lucrative practice. Yes, I converted my private practice into an institutional practice. Right. This helped me in talking to lots of others to join me. Right. You know, we are a group of now 72 people working together. Right. All of us work for a salary. They make them understand that one person does not get the benefit of practice. Right. I myself made it to a paid, paid service, paid for the service that I do for the institution. So it worked out well. Right. So, sir, uh, what are the biggest challenges you found in this area? Are you losing talent to people who can pay 20, what, 20 times more, 100 times more? <laughs> I don't know whether 100 times, but very definitely people outside are paying much more than what we do and it's a human tendency to succumb to such temptations. We do have attrition, that's one of the major problems that we have. We would like to open up branches in other parts of the country but I don't want to open up without making sure that they would maintain quality. Quality is the most important thing. And I can assure you about the quality here because they've been certified by the NABS. Well, if, if we have a cab, cabinet minister who is an MP from Rajasthan coming into Shankar Netwale to have his eyes looked at, you have a name for quality. But sir, loss of talent, even an institution like Colony Institute of Medical Sciences uh, is losing a lot of its good people with the proliferation of private hospitals around Delhi. True, true. And do you have the same problem or is it less safe? Much less, I should say. But we do have a problem. And I would like to attract the brightest to the people in India to come and work here. I would like them to have their professional happiness rather than hanker about monetary happiness. And they all come here at MD level because they want they want Shankar Netrale on their CV and on the on their boards <laughs> because you you can drive around the country and uh, and you see eye specialists saying Shankar Netrale. A special thing. So, sir, that, uh, that way you spread the good work around the country. Sir, India really requires an army right. to be developed for 
hundreds of such for eye care for battling against the blindness right the problem is a very major problem and i'm sure you've heard the statistics that that almost over the one fourth of the world blindness is in india yes we need more manpower which is such a shame such a shame because a lot of it is avoidable or curable yes yes 80% is curable 80% is curable but i think almost half is avoidable if you act in time yes dr badrinath just when we are talking about the problem of blindness in india i think it's the right time to enter your retinal block and i think this is the cutting edge of a lot of the surgery and a lot of the things that you are doing yes yeah, this is a virtual retinal department right and uh, we do a lot of surgery here and we have 18 consultants working together and uh, indeed this one has answers to at least about 15 20 years ago nobody would perform a vitreo retinal surgery but now we have all the techniques all the instruments so could you explain to a dummy what is vitreo retinal yeah i know vitreo is means a fluid retinal is to do with the retina so, vitreo is a jelly which is in front of the retina retina is a very sensitive layer right. a part of the brain which is in the back of the eye uh, in, fact, in fact it's an extension of the brain that is right that right. is right uh, the vitreous which is a jelly which is in front of the retina has a relationship with that so sometimes it it, it uh, develops scar tissues blood vessels all these things can produce complications it can pull and cause a detachment of the retina what we call right. as a traction detachment it can bleed because the breakage of the new blood vessels as in diabetes diabetic retinopathy means There's a hemorrhage inside the vitreous cavity, bleeding from the retina. Right. So we take. Which is a very common problem in India. Right. right. So the best thing is that uh, you see, Professor Robert Mahama of uh, Duke University in the United States is the father of the vitreous retinal surgery, and he developed instruments which are small, which can enter the inside of the eye through small holes, three holes. and the device was actually research found out and worked upon in his garage aha uh-huh. so to be a researcher you don't have to have a big lab you know, you know the you have to have good ideas and commitment yes he just instruments and equipment right people have to work hard people have to have a concept which they should be willing to try and find out what happens so there are lots of interesting ideas which we have which can be tried out and done So my colleagues are good. So we have lots of research work going on. We have ethics subcommittee headed by Justice Mohan, right, formerly Supreme Court, right, right, Judge Justice, and we have also ethics research right. subcommittee. Right, so lots of things are possible. Right. So, uh, sir, uh, cataract is one. Other leading causes of blindness which are avoidable in India? A uh, good question, I should say. We are surprised to hear. the refractive errors is one of the important causes of blindness in india please tell mm-hmm. me again sir I... refractive errors refractive errors yes yeah. you know you go wearing glasses right and with glasses you see very nice and very well absolutely But in fact glasses, in, in fact is... i see it uh, 6 by 5 <laughs> oh, i'm overcorrected if even the refractive errors are not corrected it can cause lesser vision poorer vision and that is one of the causes of blindness You mean so many people in India are actually only technically blind because they don't have glasses. That's right. Right. As simple as that. If you provide them glasses, the blindness can be cured without much ado. Oh, is that why you have mobile vans that make glasses on the spot? I believe you have glass grinding machines. Yes. See, when you go to a village and conduct a camp, if you give them a prescription, where will they buy the glasses? Right. They are uh, not prepared to go to the next next town. It is Provide more glasses. more more expensive for them, and so the prescription remains unfilled for a long period of time. So what we decided was that once we do an examination in the village, we'll have the glasses ground in the village itself. And the doctor says to the villager, "Give it to him." So, so he wears it from the time. So, so how much does a pair of glasses like that cost? About 150 to 250 rupees. And you do you give it free? We, we you know we, we do charge patients. Right. But if you give anything free, then they don't put value to it. Unfortunately, not appreciated, particularly right. glasses. Right. So we charge them, but there are many people, philanthropic people, who would like to subsidize, right, or even uh, write off 
right. right. So, sir, uh, at this young age of 74 now, uh, what new frontiers are left to conquer? Where do you move now? What, what is the next big thing that you do? Having built the finest eye facility in the region, one of the finest in the world, having done it all on charity, having built excellence, having trained more eye specialists in India than anybody, what is the next frontier? There's a lot to do, sir. There's a lot to do. And I would probably say that uh, e-learning right. is a technique which you can absorb from the others. Because you are doing a lot of telemedicine. Yes, yes. And if you can absorb e-education, e e e e-learning, we can introduce that in ophthalmology, particularly for teaching and training, right. and bring about a uniformity in education throughout right. India. Right. And procedures. Yes, 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 yes. yes. SOPs, so I call. think this is one, this is one, one of the areas. Other thing is that in retinoblastoma, uh, that's the cancer of the retina. retina. The cancer of retina in children. In childhood, in children. We would like to develop an institute for retinoblastoma. Retinal blastoma. No, retinoblastoma. Retinoblastoma. So a lot of patients come here from all over India, and uh, we find it pitiable to see them because they have a cancerous condition in a child. One eye may have to be removed also. In such a situation, they come all the way to Chennai, don't know the language, the food is different, they have no friends, no relations. So we would like to develop an institution which is very customer friendly. Right. And provide them the latest as far as advances are concerned. Right. We have two of our consultants who have been sent to Canada to learn the recent advances. They come back and they are working now here. Right. And we provide the best that we can. A lot more needs to be done in the and area. Will you do that in Chennai or somewhere else? In Chennai, sir. In Chennai, because yes. Chennai, Chennai is the home of, yes. Uh, yes, yes. of Shankar Netrali. Yes, But sir. you know, your footprint is now everywhere, from Kolkata to Tirupati, I noticed. To, uh, and I think every city in the country, and every chief minister wants a Shankar Netrali. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think most importantly, each one of us, I think in whatever cities we live, we want a couple of Dr. Badrinath and Dr. Vasanti. I'm so blessed to have this conversation with you and particularly as I begin this. So it's a great honor that you have come. Great honor. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Thank you for spending one time of, with us. One of my finest and most honorable guests ever. Thank, Thank you, sir. You.